Well, good morning. Merry Christmas, everyone. It's great to um, see those images of Christmas. And here we are in 2022, all these years later, after the birth of Christ, we still come and we still celebrate the meaning and the significance of the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ and what it's done on the earth and what it means for mankind. And it's so important for us to to do that, to make this pilgrimage every year to remember that Christmas is a time to celebrate. And even though we know that it may not be the 25th of December that Jesus was actually born, the point is, is that we remember that he was born and he came to the earth. Our theme today is engage when heaven occupies earth. And really that's what we celebrate at Christmas, isn't it? is that heaven came to the earth and God engaged in mankind in a very personal way. So personal that every one of us has the opportunity to to speak and to know the presence of the living God in our lives. God engages with us and sometimes we, we can't understand that, how God could come and engage himself in our lives but he also requires that we engage with him you know 700 years before Jesus was born God spoke through who many consider was the greatest prophet in the Old Testament Isaiah and Jermaine read some verses from the book of Isaiah before but it's Isaiah prophesies and he speaks of a child in the future that would be born. And that child would become the savior for mankind. And in chapter 9, verse 2, he says, The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. God engages with us on so many personal levels. But you know, it would take over 700 years for this prophecy to be fulfilled on the earth. Because God's promises are always yes and amen. When God makes a promise in his word and through his word and through the prophets, it always comes true. But our problem is is that it's always in God's timing and not our timing. And quite often we, a lot of our life is about adjusting our life to fit in with God's plan instead of trying to make God fit in with our plan. And mankind struggles with that a bit. I know I do. But darkness was the theme of Isaiah's uh, prophecy, that a Messiah was coming in a time of darkness, and he would be the light that would shine. The world that Jesus was born into was filled with with darkness. We quite often think of Christmas as being a, a jubilant time of lights everywhere and a time of celebration but when Jesus was born it was a time of great darkness there was a sense of gloom and anguish and fear and contempt ruling the hearts of the people of that time the people who occupied that land were consumed with a sense of heaviness and darkness what caused that darkness at that time well there were several things See, when Christ was born, the word of God hadn't been spoken for over 400 years. So God's people hadn't hadn't received fresh revelation from the word of God for 400 years. God had been silent. Heaven was silent. No prophets No fresh word. 
the heavens seemed to be closed to the nation of Israel. They heard nothing for 400 years. And this was in a time when the history of Israel had always received word from the prophets and from the word of God. And so there was a, a sense of darkness over them because of that. There was even more darkness because the people were now under the oppressive rule of Rome. And, and this is evident in the birth story as we read it, when Caesar Augustus took up a census and everybody had to travel to fill out the census. And it was a further reminder to the people of Israel that they were no longer a sovereign people with an identity that stood out. They were now owned by another, which caused a sense of darkness and heaviness over their lives. The streets in those days were full of Roman soldiers policing their lives. And now... God's people were exiles in their own land. Another heaviness over their lives. There was more darkness because the nation of Israel was fracturing. The people in the land were broken and fractured. There was disunity and power struggles going on between them. Control issues. And there were four main groups who were fighting and trying to lead and control God's people through religion and tradition and all kinds of manipulative ways. There was the Pharisees who were attempting to shape the religious life through legalism and laws and traditions. And then the Sadducees who were against them. And then the Essenes who lived in especially pure life and prayed about everything and lived a holy life. And then there were the zealots who sought violent means to overthrow the Roman rule. And so these groups were fighting amongst one another and there was constant friction in those times. There were riots in the streets. They were common. There was also the, the sense of darkness that surrounded Mary this young woman who had become pregnant. And we all know how that happens. And so she was considered an unchaste woman. And that's not something that was looked on kindly in those days. So there was a sense of darkness and shame and condemnation that surrounded the birth of Christ over Mary. And then the census itself was like a huge imposition where Mary and Joseph had to travel more than 100 miles to go and fill out their legal obligation. They never had a car with air conditioning. They had to do it the hard way, over 100 miles, just to fill out a legal obligation. And then there was the darkness of the constant threat of the death of the baby Jesus, where this paranoid King Herod was afraid because he'd heard that a baby was born that would rise up to be a king. And so he set his soldiers out to kill every male child under two years old. What a terrible atmosphere to see babies, children dragged out and slaughtered in front of their families. But Satan was on the loose and trying to use men to destroy God's great plan. Darkness was everywhere. It was everywhere at the time of Christ's birth. And when we consider that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, came into this world at a time of great darkness and put his life in the hands of humans, we can only wonder, wow, 
What an amazing God to show such love towards us that he would put himself in that position. Would you leave the comfort of your home to go to some poor country where there was no food and heat and riots and war and the threat of your life being taken? We'd want to stay home. But instead, God engaged with mankind and heaven came and occupied earth. You know, we're all going to face seasons of darkness in this life. And God in the flesh knows exactly what that looks like and what that feels like because he's been here. He's lived in our bodies. Christ can still pour light into our situations today. And no matter what darkness, what times we go through, the love of Christ can still pour light into any situation in our lives. And that is our hope, isn't it? The living Christ in us can change a situation in our hearts, no matter what it looks like. You know, in 1 John, in John 1, where it talks about God became a man. It says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The same light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the the right to become children of God. Children born not of a natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. So this, our God is spirit, and the Spirit of God came to this earth and dressed himself in flesh. Heaven came to earth. It talks about the name Emmanuel, that God is now with us. You know, this word engage, when heaven occupies earth, is why we celebrate Christmas. You know, the story of Christmas is fantastic, and we need to remember it and tell it over and over and over again. The Immaculate Conception, the kings, Christ being born in a stable, all these things are great parts of an amazing story but the purpose of Christmas is really about Jesus the son of God being born for us that's what's truly amazing God came and took residence on the earth with us and lived with us and God's purpose in that is the true story Engage, the word engage, the meaning is choosing to involve oneself in or commit oneself to something. And God chose to totally involve himself and show his commitment to mankind by becoming and dwelling amongst us. Even though there was such a long history of mankind rebelling against God and ignoring God and disobeying God, God still chose to engage with mankind, with his people. And we know that Jesus' life and his, his birth, his life, 
and his death would ignite faith in God again in people. Through God engaging with us on earth, we would get a close-up look at the character and the personality of our God. The Word of God was made flesh, and so it became alive again in history. And we all know that the Word of God can cut to the bone, can't it? When God's Word speaks, it, it cuts deep and it challenges us. But through Jesus' birth, the power of God would begin to be witnessed on the earth again. Through healings, miracles, hearts being changed and turned toward God. Legalism would be crushed through Jesus. Hope would be restored in the hearts of people. Light would begin to overcome darkness. God's kingdom would begin to be restored on the earth as it is in heaven once again. Jesus would restore the values of God's kingdom in the hearts of people because of Christmas. You know, values such as faith, patience, love, honor, generosity, kindness, hospitality, giving, devotion, worship, sacrifice, forgiveness, all these kinds of values began to become real again in the hearts of people because of Jesus. You know, at Christmas, we love to think of the baby Jesus and the picture of him in a manger. We all love babies because babies remind us of the potential of a new life that there's so much ahead of this new life. There's a future untapped. And when Jesus was born, there was so much potential in the life of this Savior who'd been prophesied about 700 years before. People had waited for this moment. You know, babies come from a seed, as we all know. And Jesus was born of the seed of God by the Holy Spirit. You know, I have seeds for my garden and my shed, and they can sit there for years, and they're not engaged. They sit there idle. And as soon as I put them in the ground and water them, and they become part of the nutrients of the soil and, and the elements then the seed becomes engaged with what it's surrounded with. And that seed begins to germinate and grow. And after a while, we begin to see what kind of plant it is by the form that it takes, by the size of the leaves and the stalk and the shape it takes. And then it, when it produces fruit, we begin to see whether that seed is a vegetable or a flower or fruit, we start to recognize the characteristics because the seed grows. When Jesus engaged in the earth, the whole world began to see that he was indeed the seed of God because he showed the character of God and the way he lived. His life, his ministry, his death, his resurrection, the gifts that he gave to mankind through the Holy Spirit was the fruit of the seed of the Holy Spirit of our living God. His purpose was the will of God because he was born of God. His DNA was of God. You know, we today are evidence of that fruit. The world, in the world today, there's over two and a half billion people, followers of Jesus Christ. Wow. It's incredible that that seed has continued to give. People follow Jesus. You know, Jesus' life, his birth, changed the world. 
because Jesus was the seed of God's great plan for mankind. You know, five minutes before Jesus was born, the world was a completely different place. Five minutes before I met Jesus, my life was a completely different place. And all glory to God, my, I know I probably wouldn't be alive today if it wasn't for Christ in my life. I wouldn't have meaning and purpose. Do you know a, a good topical discussion for us to have with our children over Christmas and with friends as we gather around is how did Jesus' birth change the world? Make it a conversation starter. How did Jesus' birth actually change the world? I don't know if many people here, have, has anyone here seen the movie, the latest movie, Avatar in 3D? Quite a few of you. Has, how many of you have actually seen a 3D movie, any 3D movie? Yeah, quite a lot. It's quite amazing, isn't it, when you go to a 3D movie? Because 3D glasses, when you put them on, they change how you see the movie. There's important parts of a picture that come forward when you put on 3D glasses. And there's less important parts of the picture that go to the back. 3D glasses translate a, a flat screen into one that emphasizes some parts and de-emphasizes others. You know, before Jesus was born, religious experts, the Pharisees, had a lot of things wrong. They added their own rules and their own interpretations to what God's word said. But after Jesus was born, we gained a witness of what true love was, what it was to live a true Christian life, a, a life devoted to God. See, Jesus showed us what was important and what's not. He brought it forward. We learn that living to please God, it comes forward in our life. As we, as we engage with Christ, as Christ engaged with us, we learn that there's some things that come forward in our life, like living to please God instead of living to please ourselves. That becomes less. And it's a bit like 3D. Jesus' birth brought this forward for mankind to see much clearer. 3D glasses give the picture richer, get richer detail. They transform a flat picture into one with depth. The details become richer, the picture becomes alive. You know, when you're in a 3D movie and things jump out at you and you get a fright and you react, and all of a sudden you become involved in the movie because there's things that seem like they're, they're right here. Before Jesus' birth, God not only fully reveal, didn't reveal, reveal his full plan, but after Jesus' birth, God's full plan for mankind started to become more revealed to us, to mankind. We were given some new, important details about what pleases God and how to live and how to have a life that has much fuller meaning. We started to understand that whoever believes in the name of Jesus, the Son of God, and in the death and resurrection will have eternal life. It was new information. 3D glasses make the picture more real. You can almost reach out and touch the movie. And when Jesus came to the earth and was born and became a man and lived amongst us, all of a sudden mankind started to see that God is close. His truth is closer to us than what it's ever been before. We can reach out. We can touch it. Through prayer and worship, we can begin a relationship with God that becomes very real. And our spiritual life takes on new meaning. You know, today as we celebrate Christmas, 
we've got to remember that Jesus' birth and his life and his death, it gives us a new truth, real truth. It brings heaven forward into our lives and into our thinking, into our decision making. We have richer detail to God's great love for us. And it brings life to our faith because God engaged with us. Now we're engaged to Christ. Have you ever looked at it like that? God engaged with us. Now we're engaged because Christ is returning and the church is called the bride of Christ. And we're engaged. We're waiting for the groom to come back. Another word for the meaning engaged is to be employed. And we've got to ask ourselves, how is my life employed for Christ? Am I engaged in this romantic story with the living God? Because we've got to remember that we're not humans having a spiritual experience. With Christ in us, we're spiritual beings having a human experience that's going to last forever. And so Christ in you and, and in me occupies the earth. You represent heaven on earth wherever you go. And so today we, we say thank you, Jesus, for coming to this earth and engaging with us and allowing us to become engaged to you and living a life that has meaning and purpose. Emmanuel, God is with us. Jesus said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. He's with us today because of Christmas. And my question is, are you engaged in God's business, in his life? You know, the angel spoke to Joseph in a dream about Mary. And in Matthew one twenty one, the angel said, she will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. We're engaged. And God's engaged in us because he loves us so much. We have an amazing Lord, an amazing Savior, and today we remember that. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that today as we live on this earth, Lord, and we remember the birth of our Lord Jesus and the miraculous things that happened at that time, that, that Jesus was the light of the world. And he came into this world and he broke the power of darkness forever. And that as each one of us engage with Jesus, as we give our lives fully to him and come before the cross, Lord, you bring such rich meaning to our lives. You fill us with hope. Lord, today as we go out and enjoy time with family and friends and holidays, Lord, may you continually speak with each one of us through your Holy Spirit and help us to be reminded that you engaged with us so that we could be engaged to you. And Lord, help us to live a life that's worthy of you. Lord, we thank you for the gift of Jesus to us. And we praise you, we honor you today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, bless you, church, and hope that you do have some refreshing time over this Christmas. It can be quite stressful, can't it, on a day like today? Well, for us anyway, we've got to go and feed a couple of hundred people now. Um, but that's going to be a real blessing. So do stay and have some tea and coffee, and there's Christmas cake.